summertime, you just kind of gradually get hotter. And so it helps me out to get out there as early as possible so that I don't feel it getting as bad as it is. And the only way that really you can prepare for a Louisiana heat if you haven't been in the South very long is to just make yourself miserable as long as possible out in the sun during the day. <laughs> so how have you been doing that? Well, I washed my hunting truck out. And it had everything in there from duck hunting to, I could have lived in that truck for a year and hunted every season that there was and had everything that I needed to hunt every season. Yeah. So I got that cleaned out and did some dirt work behind the house on the pond. Okay. Uh, now, you have a tractor for that? I do. Okay. Is it? It's not air conditioned, right? No. Okay. All right. So no. that kind of gets you hot throughout the day. Yeah, it's um, a Kubota. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I love that thing. Yeah. It's more satisfying than lawnmower and ever thought of being. But now, it requires a lot of, like, coordination. So to be able to get that little scooper to scoop and do, like, exactly what you'd want it to do, it's a little frustrating, but rewarding. So like one of those uh, arcade games your kids play. <laughs> exactly what it feels like. Where you're trying to like do both no knobs or uh, gear shifts, I guess you would call it. I had the nerve to think I was going to listen to a podcast while I was oh. tractoring. What co what podcast was it? Um, one of the Joe Rogans. Okay. You uh, ever listen to him? No, I have. I you know the funny thing. No, I know Danny. The funny thing is, um. Other than if you're listening, she's very, very sorry. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so this sounds awful, and I know that I've told you before that you know we're friends, but I've never seen a whole episode that you know of Swamp People. Well, now I'm on a podcast, and I have never listened to a whole episode of somebody else's podcast. So oh, no, I, know. I know. So I've been I've now been watching podcasts a little bit more, but I see that they do like little short reels. Of podcasts, and you kind of like get intrigued and you want to go hear more, which I still don't go hear more, but the reels are interesting. So I, I'm trying to do that with our podcast, so I'm learning something. Yeah. So um, that's what we will be doing. We will be sh making short reels with our podcast. And uh, actually, right now, I know we're live with on Ashley's page. So if you guys have any questions, our lovely producer, Danny, will look at it and see if there's any interesting questions out there, and he's going to kind of throw that in as he sees it. So if you do have questions, go ahead and let us know what you're thinking and what you want to hear, and Danny will ask it later on. So what else has happened this week? Well, um, my grandmother passed away this past weekend. So that was a little bit, but I'm very thankful for the opportunity I had to go see her last month, and we had a nice long visit catching up and – showing pictures from the past gator season and something else that I'll be able to announce that I'm doing soon. But we just got to catch up, and that was a good good visit. I'm glad I went and did it. And it reminds me that um, had I not done that, the amount of regret and guilt that I would have right now is astronomical because that woman was such a huge part of raising me. And uh, just she's... Like my mom is to my kids, to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so just if you got somebody out there that you got something you want to say to, go say something to them. You know, just the regret I would have of not doing that and going and seeing her would really be eating me up right now. I wouldn't be sitting here right now with you having a decent conversation. I would right. be just a mess. Well, <laughs> I am uh, I am sorry to hear that. Thank and you. um. I'm glad that you did get to go see her before um, she did pass away. So that's one of those things that you always, like you said, might regret if you don't get a chance to go go see them one last time, you know. So I'm really glad that you got to do that. And I'm glad you're here with us now. Uh, was that you or me? I don't know. Well, they ended at the same time. <laughs> um, I guess that's part of filming live. You get uh, things like that happen. So, um. I have had a lot go on, but I do want to talk about one thing real quick. So we did, uh, while we're rediscussing the cold plunge that we had, so I had a, a friend of mine, he called me with best interest, 
at heart and I'm completely fine with getting constructive criticism because without constructive criticism, you can't ever grow. And what I do whenever somebody gives me their advice or their opinion is I always listen. And then from everybody's advice and opinion, I kind of gather my own thoughts and make the decision of whatever I plan to do after that. So I had a friend of mine call me and he's like, hey, can I give you some constructive criticism about the cold plunge? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. And uh, he said, well, you're a very beautiful girl and try not to, he said, but try not to lead with your looks. He said, in your industry of being in law enforcement and owning a gun store, which is Ivana Williams Armory, by the way, I'm going to shout that out there. And uh, he said, "You there's uh, two types of uh, women in that industry. He said, either the professionals who can show you what to do with a gun, how to use it, and probably be more of a sharpshooter than the man asking for the questions. Or there is a thing called a gun bunny, which I've never heard of that. I've heard of a badge bunny. Being in law enforcement, I've heard that. But I've never heard of a gun bunny. And he told me, he said, although you look great in the bathing suit for the podcast, maybe you should wear a T-shirt or have a one-piece on. And uh, I said, well, I appreciate your advice, and I agree with you. Did he feel like you were wearing the bathing suit for? You know, he's, I know where you're going with that as far as was I trying to sexualize me? No, absolutely not. I don't think he thought that one bit, but he didn't want to see me go down that route. And uh, so I told him, I said, you know what, I absolutely agree with you. However, I have already thought of that. I was being appropriate for the situation, and I told him with my job and yours that we constantly have to watch what we say and do and post, and everything is perceived a different way. We never know how somebody's going to perceive it, right? But I told him I will never be inappropriate for whatever situation we're in. So I will never be in a bathing suit out in the middle of the woods or on the back of a motorcycle in a string bikini. And, uh, but if I'm in water, if I'm at a pool, a beach, on a boat, I'm going to be in a bathing suit. And I'm not going to cover up because a man perceives that as inappropriate. You know, yes, I have, you know, I'm a female. I, that's what we wear. You know, could I wear a one piece? Yeah, but it doesn't matter if I cover it up and it was only showing my eyes. Guess what people are going to say? Oh, my gosh, her eyes are so beautiful. It's so sexual. So it doesn't matter what you do in life. It's Everybody's going to have their own perception of something, right? So basically, you do you type situation. Like, I don't feel it's inappropriate for me being in a bathing suit getting into a cold plunge. I do think it's, for me personally, not anybody else, but for me personally, I do pertaining to my job and this um, avenue, this endeavor we're on with sippy girls I don't feel it's appropriate for me to be like I said in in a thong bikini on the back of a motorcycle you know although Danny does say sippy girls magazine would be great sippy girls oh uh, calendar <laughs> calendar calendar yeah you gotta have the calendar yeah. <laughs> so he's uh he thought otherwise but <laughs> um but no that was one of the comments I got after I had talked to him and told him, you know, my perception of it and that I'm not trying to go that direction and I will be as appropriate as possible. He said, "You know what? I'm sorry I even said it." And I don't take any offense and I'm sure he's listening and I hope he's listening cuz uh, I do really uh, love his advice. And so if he has anything else to say about this podcast, please let me know. And but sometimes it's like when People come to you with that kind of advice. You know, it's always about where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's easier to tell a female what to do when you're a guy. You know, (laughs) it really is. Because from a guy's standpoint, they do that and think that, you know, they're just giving you great advice. But also at the same time, it is good advice. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But sometimes it just makes us, it just you know, makes us second guess. And then just the anxiety of regret is not a good feeling, you know. So sometimes it's like you got to deliver it right, too. So I'm glad that he was able to talk to you about it. Well, I mean, 
I mean, you've said this before, um, that even women can criticize another female for being in a bathing suit. Oh, yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't know if you've seen that on your page or not. Well, it's obvious I've lost some weight, and I think people think it's okay to say something to you on social media because they're not saying it maybe directly to your face, but it's hurtful whether it's saying that Ashley's ate too much or or Ashley's eating good or, you know, give her a hamburger. You know what I mean? It's like it's still inappropriate regardless. Yeah. I don't think that commenting about what – people wear or their weight is anything that should be done you know unless it's done in private yeah it's not something that should be on social media for other people to see because it just it just opens up a conversation that they're not finishing right well you know I was watching TikTok not long ago and I saw this lady um and I forgot her name but she was on TikTok she had like this two-piece red bikini on um, and she was saying, wear are the bathing suits? You know, wear the bathing suit. She was saying that she was 50 and she was like between 200 and 210 pounds and that she has uh, one grandbaby coming and, and another one already here. And how she said that, would you get laughed at or talked about? Absolutely. You know, does she? Yeah, probably. But she said she will never regret wearing a two piece, a bathing suit on the beach. Um, Nobody in their 90s are going to say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have worn that bathing suit at the beach, you mm -hmm. know. And so I say the same thing. I say, wear the suit. Be confident in what you are here, you know, that you have. Not everybody's supposed to be, you know, six feet tall and 120 pounds, you know. Mm -hmm. That's not, if we were all the same, it, it wouldn't be, life would not be fun. And I feel confident in what I do. And, and again, I won't do anything that I feel is inappropriate, but at the same time, I'm not going to put on that one piece just because somebody else says they think I need to, you know? So I wish I had a little bit more of that because I've seen, I don't do it on purpose, but I do tend to take what people say about me to heart. Yeah. Just don't read the comments. I know. You always tell me that. Yeah, don't, don't read, read the, the comments. comments. Well, all right. So there is a, uh, here in Jackson, there's this thing called Jackson Jambalaya. Yeah. Ja uh, Jackson Jambalaya, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right. I was on it a couple of years ago for um, uh, for being at my department right now. And so th at that time, there was this thing called, it was like a feeling cute challenge, right? So I I had my uniform on. I put on my seatbelt. I was pulled, you know, on the side of the road. Like I was safe. There was, I was trying to think of everything that somebody might say, right? And uh, I had my little hat on that I'm supposed to wear. And um, I put on my social media, I said, feeling cute, might write some tickets later. And you'd have to put, I don't know. And um, I think within like 10 minutes, it had like 1,500 likes. Like it would have gone viral. <laughs> and uh, within 10 minutes, I also got a phone call saying, take that down. Because uh, that was not, the department did not put it out. I put it out. Uh, thinking that, hey, this is going to be a good PR thing. <laughs> you know, I was so gung-ho about helping out my department and because I love my job. And I have, as a rookie um, in a new agency, you kind of have to r realize that, hey, this is not for you to be their PR person. Not everybody <laughs> appreciates your humor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so it, ta it took me a little time to learn that. But... um. Anyway, I got on Jackson Jambalaya, and I read some of the comments, and they were hurtful. And, I mean, like, I was just like, I'm just trying to be good for my department and do, you know, great public relations. And people were saying, oh, well, I don't think she's cute, and uh, it's kind of inappropriate, and this is what I pay my taxes for, and there's all this other stuff. And it just kind of was like, well, that's really hurtful. I was trying to do something nice, and I get a whole bunch of backlash, which... I have grown since then, um, so I realized do not read the comments ever. <laughs> some of them are great, and some are just mean. And, you know, as long as you're doing something positive and you know that you're doing something positive, then continue the process. Don't worry about the people that are following you that are hating on you. 
And, you know, that actually kind of brings me to another point is um, your biggest fans are you gonna are your worst enemies. Not your supporters, your biggest fans. Because all they're doing is being your fan and waiting for you to fail. Yeah. So, um, Danny. That's why you got to be careful when you tell people, like, what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Danny has a question. Uh, what it, no, no question. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> We're not doing a question anymore. I think it was more or less a statement. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a, that was a statement. But well, what was the statement? I would rather not say. I'm the producer. I don't have to be. I don't have to say that. Okay. So it was <laughs> what it was saying. Fine. Um, was uh, in my view, in my opinion, um, any man that tries to um, uh, influence in any way, shape, or form what a woman wears, um, generally they're unhappy. You can, I mean, fight me if you want. They're unhappy. They're insecure, and um, it's. It's it's something with with them. Um, I I have no control over any other person. I stay in my own hula hoop, um, and and what you wear, if it makes you happy and you're pleased with how you look and how you feel, who am I to tell you what to wear or comment on what you wear? That's just mine. That's mine. Well, that's I think that's really sweet, and uh, yes, probably a lot of men are, would fight you over that because they feel like you know once they are married that their woman is their woman and that they can say what they should wear and how they should act and all of that. So I, I appreciate that comment. But um, so that kind of, yeah, I had, uh, this is a little uncomfortable for me, but I have been having some issues for talking about a man. Um, and I really don't want to get into anything specific, but I did. I was in that relationship where the man in my life would tell me, you know, like what I should and should not wear. I don't. I don't want to say specifically. He would tell me, "Oh, you can't wear that." Can't you know? It'd be more of I would dress up, thinking that I look very nice and attractive. And instead of him saying, "Oh, you look beautiful," it would he would point out the one thing that he didn't like and tell me. Like, all the time. Yeah. You know? Um, and there was something that just recently has happened that it kind of brings up a point that he he had said something. And, again, I'm not going to mention who it is or anything. But he had said something that really synced in. And at the time, it was just more of like, oh, you're, you're just a big jerk, right? And I'm trying to be G-rated here with saying a jerk. <laughs> But he had said that you would not be where you're at today if it wasn't for me. And you're like, yeah. Well, at first I'm like, oh, you're just a a butt. You're just a jerk. Yeah, like you know? who do you think you yeah. are? Yeah. But then I started thinking about it, and I'm always I'm the type of person that I'm going to take negative and put it into positive, right? Yeah. And um. I started thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? He's absolutely right. Because if it wasn't for the way he treated me, then I would not be strong, would not be independent. I would not be a hard worker and fight for what I want and demand to be treated how I want. And um, I would still be submissive. I would still coward to what he said and what he wanted. So he's absolutely right. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for him. So that's my positive spin on what he had said a number of years ago. But And it's taken me a while to heal from that relationship. And I'm still healing every day. So, you know, I don't go to a counselor. I kind of just think things out and talk to friends. And But I do suggest that people. My sister is a, a psychiatrist. She Well, she just graduated with a master's. And... um so she always suggests, like, hey, if you ever need anything, go talk to somebody. And I still have not done this. I'll call her up or I'll call somebody up, somebody else up and talk. But I'm still talking. I'm still talking to somebody. So if you are out there and you do need some counseling, I will 
reiterate what my sister tells me and go talk to somebody because talking it out is a lot better than keeping it all buried up inside you. you yeah, know? and going back to the point of if it's not a licensed counselor or somebody that's mm-hmm. equipped to handle it, just be careful with who you talk to because some oh, people's yeah. advice isn't what's in your best interest. That's true. And not everybody, what is that saying? Not everybody that's listening is is your friend. So watch what you say to them. Yeah, just Well, a lot of times, and I'm sure you have it too, just because people want to get out of their tickets. People want to know a police officer. Well, people want to know somebody that's on TV too. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of people that have come in and out of my life that had ill intentions because of fame. Yeah. That's and it's sad. How do you deal with that? I mean, have you gotten used to that? Do you have a hard time trusting people because of I that? do have a hard time trusting people, especially new people. Very hard time. Because it's people that have been in my life for a really long time, too, you know. So I think that I have so many good people that are in my life. I don't really have room to make new relationships without good intentions. Mm-hmm. And I think that my ability to... Yeah, I really read people has gotten a lot better, and it stinks that I don't trust people as much, but I wear my heart on my sleeve. I mean, yeah. you know, I really do. You know that. Yeah, <laughs> you do. And, and I wish I didn't. You you are always, I, in case you guys don't realize, she does read the comments. I try to tell her <laughs> not to, but she does. So there are some mean ones, and... She does get offended, and but you see, that's what they're trying to do, and I know that sometimes you, like, will get on there and say something about it, and but you see, that's what they're wanting you to do, and so just don't, don't play into their little game. Why is it so much easier for you and I to tell each other the best thing to do? (laughs) Like, can I just not read the comments? Yeah, just don't read it. I'll read it for you. Okay. And you just, you know, I'll I'll let you know what we need to do. (laughs) Okay. So I hate to jump in here, but um, Lori just asked, how did you get the nickname Deadeye? Um, I got the nickname Deadeye from my husband uh, about nine or ten years ago. And we were out hunting, and I didn't grow up hunting. I actually, I grew up around guns and shooting and stuff my whole life, and me and my dad and brother would go out and do little competitions with who could draw fastest and just little things. So I knew a lot about guns, but I didn't hunt. I just was a good shot. And my husband took me out hunting, and I called him and told him I'd shot this big buck. And he said, well, how far away was it? And I said, I pulled up my rangefinder, and it was 236 yards. And obviously. That's pretty far. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should have been shooting that far, but. I knew that I could shoot that far with that rifle. So I knew that I could, but my husband didn't know. He only knows that I could hunt. You know, he only knew that I knew which deer could be shot or not, you know, because we we love to watch deer too. You know, we're not, we're there to manage the herd, not, you know, just stone cold (laughs) killing out there. But um, I told him how far it was, and he's like, well, we're going to just sit here and hunt because unless you see it sitting there, you probably didn't hit it. And I was like, okay, all right. So we sat there the rest of the day. Well, he did. I climbed on right on down. Well, I sat there and waited for a little bit. And I climbed down and went over there and sent him a bunch of pictures of me with the deer. And he was like, all right, dead eye. It's a term that people use if somebody's a good shot. Yeah. And so since then, it just felt like a nickname I had to live up to. (laughs) So I just, I enjoy doing that and I enjoy shooting. So that's where that nickname came from. Pretty interesting story. I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, something else, um, I don't know if you want to talk about it on this podcast, but you, we, we always discuss kind of what we're going to say on podcast before we actually do it. And she had said it was a, a, maybe a week ago or something that she wanted. You were intimidated by me? Oh, when we first met. Yeah, yeah I was. Why were you intimidated? All right. Well, I, I don't really even don't know, know. And I'm, I'm going to try to explain it without being offensive. Um, you can be offensive. I won't. <laughs> well, it's just that you are tall and you are pr- 
pretty. You have blonde hair, blue eyes. You know what I mean? You're just, and you're very kind. You're very soft-spoken. And when I see social media and things like that, I mean, I'm sure that that's where I'd seen you before. Uh, And you're very confident and very proud in your position that you're in. You know what I mean? You just carry yourself well. And I think that when I first saw you, I wasn't intimidated in a bad way, but I was just like, that's somebody that I'd like to know. Oh, okay. It was in a good way. Okay. Well, you know, it's something you showed me earlier about this uh, post, this police officer saying something about, you know, she only shows on social media what she wants to show. Social media is different than her actual life, mm-hmm. right? Well, the same thing goes for me. So, like, nobody knows this. And this is why I love this podcast is that I really get to open up and tell people who I am. And then I guess, you know, for you too, Ashley, yeah. you get to really show your fans what you're really like versus them just seeing you on Swamp People. And um, I used to be extremely shy. Like, in junior high, I remember the only way I would do a test or anything is if I, like, had my head on my arm and then I would, like, hide in a little – uh, ball doing my test and stuff and I would rather get an answer wrong than like raise my hand and ask the teacher what does this mean you know like that's how bad I was would not talk to anybody I had like two friends in high school um, that were females and then the rest were guys just because I did track and stuff like that but I used to be very shy insecure I, I still feel like I'm kind of the ugly duckling I do I do feel like I have gotten a lot more confident, but I think that's because of my job. But whenever I was younger, I was did not have any confidence. And so for me to even post on social media, because like, again, another thing about a relationship I was in, um, that person said that if you're posting on social media, you have you have two personalities, because obviously, with your job in law enforcement, you're confident. And then you post it on social media, obviously, you need attention and validation and that's not at all the case you actually are more confident in my opinion if you post on social media because you know how just like you see you know how many people comment on stuff that they have no idea what it is or say behind your back because they see you post on social media like for me oh she's all over social media she must love attention no I actually could care less (laughs) like I do this because I have four kids And I want to see myself and my kids have a better life. And I have realized that social media can help with advertising. It can help my businesses, which I have um, the armory. And then I have a driving class. And and then Sippy Girls, we're having to promote that and uh, that organization. And so social media is great, especially if you're a young business person just starting out and you don't have that hundred thousand dollars to spend on advertising for commercials so what do you do you do social media for free and so I realized that this a couple years ago I've been growing my audience for a number of years and I'm I'm just now starting to get monetized or monetization I think that's what how you pronounce it and um, I would always be told well you you're just getting you're just trying to get attention no I don't. I don't want attention. Our I biggest s- case we got, which made us be able to start the Jones Law Firm, was our case on social media. What was that? What, what was the case? It was a GM ignition switch case. Okay. So you put it on social media? <laughs> it was a lady that had found us through social media. Oh, okay. So you, like, advertised on social media, and that's what helped you They out. just told us what, um, I mean, I just said, you know, that we have the law firm. Okay. And the lady reached out and asked what kind of law that we practiced, and... That was whenever I found out what was going on, and we were able to win a case that we opened the law firm with. So social media can be so you yes yeah, yeah, so you utilize social media to find them, and they found you and all that. Yes, so but that's why I use social media, and I can tell everybody all day long. No, I, I'm not trying to get attention. Nobody believes me, but at the end of the day, I really don't. I really don't care, and, and I guess that might sound bad, but. That's really my personality. I I don't like attention. I wish that I could just have a <laughs> smidget of that. I just don't care what people say anymore because well, I think I'd it's with my job, you know? Like, I have people that cuss me out and flip me off and, you know, think I'm a horrible person because I gave them a citation. And 
I mean, you did something wrong, and I was trying to correct it because that is my job. So, yes, you cussed me out, and I just at the end of the day, like, I don't, I really don't care, you yeah. know. And you you learn to have uh, thicker skin, thicker skin, and and the in the academy when you're called pathetic like every single day. That is a lot. That's good training. You know, at the time, I'm like, well, they are very mean men, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I have come to realize they were doing it on purpose, and everything was uh, designed specifically for when you actually are on the road and what you might deal with. And this, uh, I mean, it's crazy to think that police-style academies um, really train you for life in general, you know? Like, they train you to be tough, but at the same time to be compassionate. Because of what we deal with, we have to learn to turn on the, the hey, I'm here for you, but then the next second, hey, I got to arrest this person, you know? So we might be at, on a traffic citation or a domestic, you know, not with my job right now anymore, but the one before at a police department, We have to be the strong people, you know, one instance, and then be the mean or the tip, you know, the bad guys having to take somebody away to jail. I heard some really good advice right before this podcast, and it's a pretty simple statement that your brain can kind of figure out the motive behind the whole course with just this one statement, detach with love. Okay. And it's, I mean, it sounds like... I've got to look more into it, okay? But it's just about not being able to control everything and being able to detach yourself from that situation, whereas I do it more critically. You have to detach because it's your job and you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just mumbling now. Well, I guess, you know, that makes sense because... If it is something to do with my job, like on a wreck scene, and somebody's hurt, I can remain calm, call the ambulance, do whatever I got to do, right? It's no big deal. If my kids even get a scratch and are bleeding, I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Like, I freak out. Like, um, at my, I had another house before the house I'm at now, and I was painting, like I do Cerakote work, and I was doing it on some cups and stuff. Um, and now with the armory, I do it on guns. So, but I was, I was Sarah coating and I was in this little storage room in our garage and it has the water heater in the garage. Right. And, uh, you have to have, I have acetone and everything around it. And, uh, I was just got done with like doing 20 cups and all of a sudden I accidentally spill the acetone and then the water heater came on, I guess it's, yeah. And then the flames, like um, immediately ignited the uh, acetone and it like blew up. I didn't blow up, but it like went everywhere and I freaked out. Is when that it, what like drug labs do when they <laughs> blow up? Well, like you a s- chemical and so heat. So after the fact, I found out that it was just, you know, because it was acetone and all that, it, yeah, it did flame up real quick, but supposedly it, went, it goes back down. Like it's still on fire, but it's only like because of the fumes, I guess. Um, and if there's a fireman that's watching, please explain. Oh, it's this probably to me. because the alcohol in it is Some, like more dense. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know that it dries up faster ter- terminology for it. But basically, I freaked out because of how high the flames initially were that I ran out, got the kids out of the house, and I ran outside when if I would have just remained calm, I could have put it out, most likely. I don't know put it out and it would have been fine well instead (laughs) we have some fire (laughs) i was like wait a minute (laughs) sound effects yeah Yeah. (laughs) we have some fire trucks going out on outside um so if if i would have remained calm i could have handled the situation right but because it was my house and my kids were at the house i like freaked out and i got all of them outside and went across the street and um, my kids were like, what about Sadie? Which is, was our, do- our German shepherd at the time. And I was like, oh no, like the, the, everything that could go wrong. Like I was freaking out. So I had to run back over there and try to get the dog out and all that. And then I was trying to dial 911 to tell them. And my hands were like shaking and I was in law enforcement at the time. And like, I just got on with a state agency. And so I'd just been through academy. I should have been like really super tough and everything, but 
And when it comes to my situation, I cannot handle the situation. So do not call me in for a fire uh, if it's at my house. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's uh, let somebody else handle that part. But yeah, maybe that's what you mean by detach with love. So if you don't love it, you can detach yourself from it, right? And I don't know. I, I love Is that, what that, that means? that's what you got from that. <laughs> So I don't know if I was even right about that, huh? It's kind of self-explanatory, but detach with love. I detach with criticism. You detach. I I really do. Like I I mean it from the best way, and I'm loving deep down inside. I mean it in the best way possible. But I think because people are critical to me, I'm I'm more critical. I'm more critical of myself. I think, but. I'm not a good with words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm trying to explain to you what I do through this podcast, I'm realizing I don't form thoughts very well. Well, that that's something new for me, you know. I have not got to do a lot of po- uh well, I haven't got to do a lot of podcasts, but I haven't got to do a lot of public speaking engagements. And so I've actually wanted to do more and I was I've been trying to get you to do more. Because that may way I can maybe tag along with you, and and watch you and and learn. I was hoping I was going to learn from you, but um, it's different doing a podcast where you're just recording your voice. I know yeah. that we're doing the live here. You can watch back if you're just tuning in later on. But when I'm having to concentrate on my voice and you know what I look like and situ, you know that's, what I mean. That's what it's I'm watching. Too. Every once in a while, I'll flex. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> But, yeah, so today I actually was very fortunate, and I was able to go speak to a Lions Club meeting. And it was not only odd because it was a public speaking engagement, and I haven't got to do a lot of those. I have done a lot with the recruiting pertaining to my job, and I've gone to colleges. So I have done multiple before, but every time I do it, it seems to be different, and I still get nervous. And I want to do more of them to practice. And because, like I said, me being very insecure, I seem to have gone through stages in life that I've gotten over my insecurity and my shyness with certain things. Like, I do not like to yell. But being in law enforcement and going through the academy, they will they will make you yell. They will make you yell until because you want to stop doing whatever they're making you do. And you will yell as loud as they want you to just to stop doing the push-ups or the jumping jacks or whatever they have you doing, right? So you're going to do whatever you have to. And so going through the two police academy, I realized that, okay, I've gotten over that. I can yell if I need to. I, I still don't. I mean, like, I try not to. I don't have to unless I'm on the side of the road and i got to yell over traffic or something like that. But Or about my kids. I have – being a mother has grown – made me grown out, you know I grew out of that shyness so you know whenever I was growing up my m- mother would be like you know Ivana like r- yell out on top of her lungs at Walmart or something like that where she you know uh, she couldn't find me and I was so embarrassed right and I always told myself I will never do that yes you will <laughs> if you are a mother and you cannot find your children you will yell at the top of your lungs because you have to mm-hmm. so um those are scary, by the way, <laughs> if you can't find your kids. Usually they're just FYI for new mothers. They're probably hiding in the middle of the clothes. That's usually where they are. Uh, and they think it's funny and they start giggling. <laughs> but um, going back to the speaking engagement. So I went to a speaking engagement and I was in front of 10 men, which coming from my department, I work with all men and most of them are my bosses because there are no females. And um I usually don't get a say-so in anything just because I am new. I've been at the department for five years, so I have no rank. And so you kind of are like the low man on the totem pole. But not only that, you're a female of all men. You know, one female of, I think there's six or seven at my department, females and all the rest of 500 and something are men. And so you don't really get a say-so. Most of the time I feel like the little sister, you know, that they're like, oh, just go just be quiet, go sit down, you know? And uh, so it was unusual and, a, and an incredible experience to talk to these 10 men that are older men of, uh, I guess, more the pillars of the community. 
say if you say, if that's how you say it correctly. And um, they were listening to me, like what I had to say, my experiences with working at local law enforcement agencies before I be- went over to the state agency, um, my experiences with my businesses, and what I plan to do in the future. And it's it was very inspiring to me that I could do this and I could do more of this. So I'm excited to eventually get there, eventually do more public speaking engagements. But yeah, that was pretty exciting. I don't, I don't know. Have you ever done a public speaking engagement? I have before, but I like just doing the question and answering. <laughs> I don't have like a, a big setup. I do like if I, it's something that I'm passionate about and I do have like an alligator head or an alligator hide or something there. It's really easy for me to just talk somebody through the process on how we hunt them in Louisiana because it's so much different than in Mississippi. Or just the process of what I'm doing, and I get excited about it. I can talk about it. But I have a hard time landing the plane. What do you mean? Like <laughs> like finishing the thought. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me, me too, because sometimes I, I didn't want to tell you this because everybody's watching right now. And, w- and they're listening, but halfway through some of my conversations with you, I will forget where I was going, going. with it, and then and then I remember, so I don't know if anybody um, actually does any type of public speaking, how do you stop doing that? How do you, like, I think you gotta have bullet track? points. I mean, it makes it fun for us. Look, I know, do these bullet talking. points, though, and, and then we never it gets talk me about nowhere. It. Yeah. I've got bullet points for days. <laughs> we y'all. try to be professional here, but it ends up being just more of um, <laughs> more of what we just, on, on the top of our head, what we think about. So, I mean, I did have some bullet points, which I, I put in, I keep in my phone, and um, I send it to Ashley, and I'm like, hey, this is what we're going to talk about. And then I have, we have yet to talk about any of it. So the last one I sent you, I was going to, like, I'm glad we, I looked at this. So I was going to talk about (laughs) being aware of your surroundings. That was something I was going to say. And so what I mean by that is I was on the coast for for work, right? Mm -hmm. I was at a gas station and this mother comes, knocks on my window. I mean, I saw her coming, but I rolled down the window and all that and, uh, She's like, hey, I just want to let you know what just happened here, and I want you to reiterate to my daughter what I told her was correct. So what happened, and her daughter told me, um, she's like 17 years old. She just came from the high school to go to the gas station, and um, she was going to meet her mother. Well, these uh, guys went up to her window and started knocking on her window, and she was on the phone with her mother, and she was like, Mom, just hurry up and come here. There's these guys knocking on the window. What should I do? And the mom was like, do not roll down the window. And um, and I told the young lady, I was like, well, yeah, your mom's absolutely right. And what you did was correct. And um, she said that these guys, she remembers their vehicle. They actually had, according to her, had followed her from the high school to the gas station. And then as soon as she parked, they immediately came up there and started knocking on her window. And I told her, I said, I know that we're raised in the South. And I was talking to the mother and the young girl. I was like, and we're trained to be polite at all costs, it seems like, especially us women. We w- we're supposed to be this Southern belle, right? Like always smiling and very proper and not wear a bikini and a full. <laughs> but um, I told her, I was like, you did perfect. And if that ever happens again, sometimes you just have to be mean. You have to act like you are hardcore and you are, will fight them tooth and nail, you know? That was, like, the only option for me when I was growing up. Be, to be mean? Yes. Why? I was not talking to strangers. I wasn't. I, my parents were not having that. Like, they taught me to be very mean. Oh, mine was... Oh, well, I was just shy. I didn't talk to anybody anyway, but I was also very sheltered. So I was the, there's five of us siblings. I have two older brothers, and then it's me, and then I have a younger brother, younger sister. So I was the first girl, and they treated me like a little delicate flower. I mean, I did play sports my, my whole life, so I tried to compete with my brothers, and I was a very tomboy and all that, and that's where the sippy girls um, concept kind of came from. But 
I didn't talk to anybody. I never um, went out with anybody, like, until I was 18, and that's um, whenever I met my (laughs) ex-husband. But I I never was mean, though, and if I did talk to anybody, it was always very polite. So I'll give you an example. And I'm very shocked. I know this is going to get deep here real quick, but I'm very shocked I have never been like really like sexually assaulted. I hate to really go deep with that. But um, when I was 15, I remember I was working at what was called the courthouse. It's not actually a courthouse. It was a gym in like a Flowood area. And I was a lifeguard and this guy comes in and he starts talking to me and all that. And, and oh, by the way, I was in a one piece bathing suit. But uh, this, this older guy starts talking to me. He I find out he's like 45 or somewhere around there. And he has a, uh, a child that was my oldest brother's age. And they were in Boy Scouts together and all that. And he was talking to just, I was, I was nice. I wasn't going to like be mean and be like, look, I, I don't want to talk to you anymore. But he ended up saying, hey, why don't we go out sometime? And like I'm 15 years old. And I was like, for what? To talk about my brother? Like, He's like, no, to talk about you and me. And the the politeness came in. I'm like, I saw this little lizard. I was like, oh, look at that lizard. And I started walking over to the lizard, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I got to go. And I was just real polite about it. Nowadays, if somebody were to do that, I would not be polite at all. And if I ever saw somebody do that to a little girl, definitely would not. I don't care if it's my little girl or not. You're not going to talk to a young girl like that. And that's why when we start doing hunts with with young girls, there would never be just one person with the little girl. There will always be at least two people. It's either going to be the guide and a parent or a guide and one of us that's been vetted. All of them are going to be vetted no matter what. The guide's going to be vetted as well. But there will never just be, hey, no offense to men, but hey, old man, here goes this young girl for you. And like I'm... I'm not, we're not going to do that. Yeah. And I've had a guy actually ask me saying, hey, I have hunting camps and, or I have a, a, a tree stand and all that. I was like, okay, well, where is it at? You know, we can have, you know, advertise for it. And he's like, well, I thought you were going to allow y- a young girl to go. I was like, yeah, but I haven't like, I know you, but I haven't vetted you. I haven't seen what your place looks like, all that. I'm not going to just give you this child, you know, like, no, no way. And because who who knows if they're just really shy like I used to be you know I say that I'm I was really mean growing up but I wasn't I guess I was shy and I just didn't say anything at all because being in a situation like that with an older guy like especially being that you were only 15 yeah that's a scary situation oh so here goes the creepy part okay so he knew my dad too right after I he could I guess could sense that I was like get away from me right he said oh by the way don't tell your dad and normally I probably wouldn't because it was just, you know, awkward, uncomfortable, you know. My dad was not, my dad's more of like the mom and my mom's more like the dad because my mom would, uh, she stayed home with us and she took care of the household, like fixing stuff and all that. And uh, my dad was a reporter. So he he worked and, you know, he didn't know how to do handyman stuff. So that's what I mean by like my dad was more of the female. But um, I did. I went home and I, I was like, Dad, I got to tell you something. And because it really was scary to me, like, and I was very shocked I had enough courage being that shy to me tell too. my dad. But I ended up telling my dad, and the, my, my dad and mom called the manager of the courthouse because they were all, like, we had been members forever, and uh, the manager and my parents were great friends and all that. And so they actually found out who the guy was, and they banned him from the courthouse. Good. Yeah. So. He better be glad that's all he got. Yeah. Right? So there was an. And I don't know what is making me feel like I need to go down this path. But um, I told you I, had, I felt like talking today. <laughs> well, talk on. I'm listening. <laughs> so there's another time. So I was, uh, I think I was 15, 16 still because it was 15 because I was still playing softball. It was like my last year to play City League softball. And um, there was this girl. Well, let me back up. So one of hey, the. Um, do you want to finish that other episode up and start this one? Because if you're feeling like talking, I think this is a great subject. And I would love for people to tune in and listen to, I mean, especially from like a mother's standpoint, I would like to know what things you think helped make you come to your dad. Let's. So are we done with this episode? 
I think Has we, it been I think an hour already? 51 minutes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. But I think it's a really good subject. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I Like I said, I just, I've been needing to vent and talk, and I love this podcast. And I'm so sorry that Ashley's fans are not getting to hear Ashley. And I kind of seem, I feel like I've taken over this. No, I want to listen to it, and I think that we should make a little bit more time for it because I got okay. a couple of questions for you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, well, I guess we're going to, we know what we're going to start with the next time. But uh, we're going to finish up with this one. And I know we have a couple things that we have on our page that we have tagged. So, Sippy Girls, this is really what this is all about. We're talking about women in Mississippi, me and Ashley, and we will have guests from Mississippi as well. Not only, I mean, women from Mississippi, not just us, um, and men as well from Mississippi uh, doing different things in their community. I can't wait. Their We've community. got some exciting stuff. Right. And um, so we'll, we'll eventually have more of this, but that's what Sippy Girls is all about, is trying to broadcast women in Mississippi. So please go like and follow Sippy Girls. And if you want to hear this podcast, it's at sippygirls.org slash podcast. If you ever want to join Sippy Girls, we do accept membership now. And you can go to sippygirls.org to join as a member. You just click membership. Also, if you don't mind, please follow my page, my personal page, Ivana Williams, or Ivana Williams Armory, because it is slow right now, and I'm trying to start a business, really succeed, see it succeed. And um, that would help me out as well as Ashley Jones Law Firm. I mean, not Ashley Jones. I'm sorry, Chad. Jones Law Firm. Uh, so we're really not only promoting Sippy Girls, but we're trying to promote our personal uh, endeavors as well. So help us out and like all those pages. And we look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. I'll read the comments. She won't. But I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, see you all later.